that this is very much in news right now in Sweden is that we have a, or in Europe, we have a huge refugee crisis. What is your view on, uh, on the um, <coughs> policy prospects uh, for an unequal society uh, that is free? How should we react to this crisis? How should we handle the uh, immigrants? So, the two, the, 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 I mean, it, there's a number of issues here that have to be untangled, right? Why are all the refugees want to go to two countries? Sweden? And Germany. I mean, every single one I've seen interviewed on television. How, how do we get to Germany and then to Sweden? Uh, I mean, that's the path. Why? Because when they arrive here, you give them a check. Hey, I might immigrate. <laughs> and then you give them a home. Even though there's a, from what I understand, there's a housing shortage in Sweden for you young Swedes, but they get a home. So you created a perverse incentive in welfare state Europe that anybody can get a check. I mean, that's absurd. So the welfare state needs to go. Right? So in a free world, you wouldn't have a welfare state. So the magnet, at least that particular magnet, wouldn't exist. Instead of people coming here because they want to work, because they want to produce, because they want to be part of a society, they're coming here in order to leech off of you, which is wrong. So that's one aspect of it. Right? It's the, the existence of a welfare state. But there's a second complexity, and this is politically incorrect to say, but you know, I'm not politically correct. Um, and that is that I believe the West is at war. I believe there's a war going on, a civilizational war, if you will, between the West and between radical Islam. And it, we haven't declared this war, but if there's a war going on that we refuse to acknowledge because we've stuck our head deep in the sand, then if there is a war, you can't just let the enemy, because most of the immigrants are Muslim. Now, I don't know what percentage of them are radical Muslims, but nobody knows because nobody, nobody cares, right? Uh, you can't just let the enemy into your territory. You know, America didn't allow Nazis into America during World War II. But so We are the ones that selling most weapons in the Middle East, the Swedish people. The Swedish government. Yeah, I'm not saying why the war exists. We can talk about why the war exists and who's at fault. But the point is that if there is a war, yeah. you don't allow the enemy in. So you have to decide if there's a war or not. I believe there is one, and, and that, should be a, that should be a reason to have a barrier. And then you have to do something about the welfare state. It's, it's, it's not just, it's not fair, it's not right that people can just show up at your door and receive goodies. That comes at somebody's expense, and, and why take from them in order to give? So, uh, you know, in a free society that's not at war, then I believe in open migration. The people should be able to move, and, and you know, I'm an immigrant, um, and uh, you know, I, 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 I did this. My, my kids, I mean, I come from a long line of wandering Jews, right? So my kids are fourth generation born on a different continent different continent, right? So, uh, I, uh, they were born in the U.S., I was born in Israel, my parents were born in South Africa, their parents were born in Lithuania. Right? My wife's mother was born in Morocco, her father was born in what was then Palestine, and her father's grandparents were born in Uzbekistan. So, yeah, we cross borders, we move, cool. So I'm all for migration, but it shouldn't be at people's expense. Nobody paid me to go to America. Nobody gave me a check, right? Nobody paid my ancestors to go to, uh, my grandparents to go to South Africa when they left Lithuania. They, they were kind of running because the, you know, they were being killed. But, you know, so they had a strong incentive to leave. Just like these migrants have a strong incentive to leave now. I mean, they're being killed. It's horrible what's going on in Syria and the rest of the Middle East. Oh, and the rest of Africa. But... Yeah. And that war started because of the United States, yeah? No. Why, why did it went to war to with Iraq? Well, let's put Iraq aside a second. But the war in Syria is not about Iraq. But that was the, from the there. The war in Syria started. started before ISIS. It was there it started, it was there it started yeah? But look, I mean, let's get Syria right. We had, uh, we had uh, Bashar al-Assad, a brutal dictator. Your who opinion. Was, 
No, not in my opinion. Whose opinion? In fact. Okay. There's such a thing as reality and there's such a thing as fact. He's a dictator. Was he elected? No. Were you, did you have free speech in Syria? No. If you, uh, if, if you did something that he didn't like, did you go to jail and were you tortured? Yes. I, I mean, he's a dictator. I mean, th that's not an issue of opinion. Now, some people benefited from the dictator, like with all dictators. Some people benefit and other people don't benefit. But the uprising against Assad is the same uprising that started in the late 1970s, early 1980s of the Muslim Brotherhood against his father. And what did his father do when the, when the uprising happened back then? He flattened Homs. He killed 20,000 to 40,000 people. Bashar Assad's father. So Assad inherited the same kind of regime. The same kind of, and, and again, he, got, he had an uprising. An uprising led to the current civil war, which was complicated and extended by the fact that the United States made a disaster out of Iraq, which then create, helped create ISIS and the whole mess that we have today is a consequence of that. But, okay, well, whoever's fault it is, that's the reality in the Middle East. And, and the fault at the end of the day is not Americans. The fault is the fault is uh, is uh, is a brutal dictator. The American went to war with Iraq. Sorry for interrupting. Sure. Oh, sorry. I don't want to really get into the Middle no, East okay, here. But look, but look, uh, 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 Iraq was ruled by another dictator. The fault for the problems in the Middle East are the people in the Middle East. They're ruled by dictators. That doesn't end well ever. Whether America invaded Iraq or didn't invade Iraq, Iraq was a mess. Shiites were being killed <coughs> by a Sunni president who was gassing his own people. That's, that's not because of America. No, so, but, I mean, maybe civilian X would have died under one regime, but then as a result of an invasion, some other civilians died. Sure, no, so, I, I, again, I don't want to get... Instrumentally, the end result is the same, even if you have a moral background to it that is different, right? I don't know. I don't know if instrumentally it's the same. The, the, the point is, and, and the question is, is the invasion just or unjust? But that's a whole other question. But the problems in the Middle East were not created by the West. The problems in the Middle East are created by people in the Middle East. Talking about Bashar al-Assad, they have a, a very a big song going on, uh, singing about him, that it goes, Allah, Surya, Basar, Ubas. Have you heard it before? No. No. My point is that it's very, very, uh, in my opinion, yeah. talking about the conflict, yeah. it gets uh, hard to take an angle. In specific case, talking about the Middle East. I it's it's relatively talk. easy. No. If you know the history, I don't think it's that hard. Yeah, the government, ma the government made a... 9/11 that the Americans did, and well, then Americans they blamed them. Okay, but look, listen, my, okay, you, you, you tell, let me tell my point of view. Yeah, Can I, okay, okay. Well, I, it's I listen, my stage. I, I listened to you for like two <laughs> hours. I didn't say, say it. Okay, then if your stage, you should, you should speak. Okay, can you give me a? Can you be a little bit more specific? I've never sure. been to Harvard. I've never been to class there. But can you give me an That's example? That's your advantage. Oh, thank you. Of how they are teaching sacrifice, how they are teaching altruism. Well open daily paper and look at Mr. Carter, a very peculiar creature, who is telling you that we're going to uh, overcome the oil shortage by driving less, by giving up. Let us all make a sacrifice. Let's lower our standard of living and we'll all be living better. Now, is that a proper philosophy to tell a country that has pride and self-esteem? At one time, with all the faults in American intellectual equipment, and there were a lot of faults, at least people were taught pride in their own country and in the good aspects, the great achievements of this country. Today, you're supposed to apologize to every naked savage anywhere on the globe because you are more prosperous, because you've earned your money. You have to feel guilty and apologize for it, while he hasn't and doesn't intend to learn from you. He just wants your money. That's what we're being taught. What?